Hi, I'm Paul McGill, professional wildlife photographer, and in this video I'm going to teach you all the tips and techniques that I use for capturing birds in flight. So what is the best lens to use for flight photography? Well personally I think something like this is absolutely ideal if you want to handhold. So this is a Canon 400mm f5.6, other lenses like the 300 f4 and the 100 to 400 mil are going to be ideal for flight photography. So they're relatively light, means you can handhold it for quite long periods of time, a bit easier to carry around and also it's going to be a bit more affordable than the long lenses. A good technique when you're following birds in flight, keep your elbows fairly close to your body, try not to grip the camera too tightly, you don't want it too loose but you don't want to grip it too tightly either, just try and stay fairly relaxed, just try and follow smoothly, try and press the shutter gently as you go. It's a good idea as well to kind of point your body uh, to where you think you're going to finish panning. Generally point in that direction, then you can start off over here and as you pan around you can keep going and just basically pan from your waist. So if you have got a really big lens such as this uh, Canon 500mm or maybe you've got a 600mm or even bigger then uh, I would advise using a gimbal head. You can hand hold for short periods of time but they tend to be very heavy so it's quite difficult to do. So I'd suggest using a gimbal head like this. You can move in this direction panning and you can move in this direction tilting. So the two combined gives you really good freedom of movement and you're able to track birds in flight. If you wanted to get the best out of using a long lens, check out the other video I did which was a video specifically on long lens technique. So hopefully that's going to help you. Probably the biggest tip I can give you for actually following birds in flight is to try and follow the movement rather than the actual bird. So that might sound a bit strange but try and get used to the speed and the direction the bird's moving in and just try and match that rather than worrying too much about keeping it in the centre of the frame. So if you do that, it's a bit of a psychological thing, but if you do that you probably have more success um, and better images. What settings should you use for flight photography? Basically the most important thing is your shutter speed, so you want to get your shutter speed up. I suggest trying to get the shutter speed to a thousandth of a second. Some birds you can photograph a bit slower, like barn owls for example. Other birds, they might need to be faster. So a thousandth of a second is a good starting point. Aperture, I would suggest stopping down a little bit from your widest aperture. So if your widest aperture is f5.6, as it is on this lens, stop down to about f7.1. It's just going to give you a bit more depth of field and hopefully the shot's going to look a little crisper. As for your ISO, basically there's a number of ways you can do it, but essentially you need to adjust the ISO to get it high enough that your shutter speed's going to be high enough for what you need. Just make sure you've got the correct autofocus settings. You want the servo setting on other cameras like Nikon, it's probably AFC for continuous. So it's basically the continuous focusing mode. In that mode, if you keep your finger half pressed on the shutter and you follow the bird, it's going to keep the focus locked onto the bird as you follow it. So what about back button focusing? Well, this is something you might have heard of. So it's essentially another way of focusing where you use the button on the back of the camera, the AF on button, and this basically operates your focus. When your finger's pressed on here, it continuously focuses. You can take your finger off, so essentially you can disengage the focus from the shutter. If you focus in the normal way, using your finger, half pressing the shutter, then it's basically doing both focus and actually taking the picture at the same time. So there are advantages. Personally, I've tried back button focus. I just don't like it. I just can't get on with it. So uh, I've gone back to the usual way. Find it works for me. So one of the most important aspects, you want to make sure that you've got continuous shooting selected. So in the Q menu here, I can go in and I've got two options. I've got low speed continuous and I've got high speed continuous. So for most of my flight photography, I select the high speed option. Now I actually do have an option of changing the continuous shooting speed. So in the menu here, I can go into, I've got high speed and low speed and I, I can actually change those for my preferences. This is my preference, I have the low speed on around 6 frames a second and the high speed usually around 10 frames a second. So what about focus points? How many focus points should you use? Well on a camera like this one, the Canon 1DX Mark I, you've got the ability to change your focus points in different ways. So I can select just one focus point which I can move around, I can use the middle focus point, I could switch to one 
close to the edge. Or alternatively, I can actually select a cluster. So I can select just a few focus points around the centre, including the centre, or I can select more, or I can even choose to use almost the whole viewfinder. So what's the best way to expose with your flight shots? Well, as always, there's different ways you can do it. I tend to use manual most of the time. So what I'll usually do, if I have time, is actually take a test shot. So for example, if I was photographing red kites against the blue sky, I'd, I'd take a test shot and then I'd adjust the exposure myself. So I'd select a shutter speed of probably around two thousandths of a second. I'd get my aperture, maybe around f7.1, and then the ISO, I'd basically increase the ISO until I got the exposure that looks right to me. Another way is to use aperture priority. So in this case you would select a wide aperture and then that's automatically going to give you a fast shutter speed. Put the ISO as high as you need to to get the shutter speed that you want. The only problem with this is you might need to do some adjustment with exposure compensation such as increasing the exposure a little bit if you're photographing against quite a light sky. Auto ISO is another option as well, so uh, particularly if you're on manual, it can work well. You set your shutter speed and aperture as you want them and then select automatic ISO and then the only thing that's going to change on the exposure is the ISO. So just be aware of the noise levels, get to know how good your camera is on noise. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please feel free to add a comment, you know, tell me how you set your camera up for flight photography. Feel free to ask me any questions. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down, but tell me why. And um, please subscribe to the channel for lots of new nature photography videos, adventures and tutorials. And I will see you next time in the next video.